Hi, I'm Nancy Friedrich, Executive Director of Content and User Engagement with Penton's Design, Engineering, and Sourcing Group. This year, we decided to sit down and have a group conversation to talk to you about the results of our salary surveys. In these surveys, we measure compensation, job satisfaction, and other factors across our brands. Electronic Design has been doing this survey for more than 10 years, while for Hydraulics and Pneumatics, it's their first year. With me today is Carlos Gonzalez. Hi, Carlos. Hi, Nancy. He's from Machine Design. Leah Scully, representing Hi. Hydraulics and Pneumatics. James Mora, who worked on the Electronic Design Salary Survey, and Chris Martino from Microwaves and RF. So what we found across our brands is that we could create a picture of the typical engineer. That person had an average salary ranging from 95K on hydraulics and pneumatics to 108K on electronic design. Also, in terms of the locations they work, California, of course, with Silicon Valley still reigns, you know, bringing, supporting a lot of our workers and being the location where a lot of the engineering companies are. But Texas is still very big, the Northeast as well, Illinois, Ohio and we saw some growth in the New York area. Also in terms of graduate degrees, the typical engineers have, at least 60% of them, have either taken graduate studies or completed graduate degrees. So that was interesting as well. Now I'd like to dig a little bit further into the different aspects of the survey that we investigated and the different plans. So one of the first things that, that we always ask about is job satisfaction and just a general overview of whether our engineering audience is happy in its job. So Leah, can you give us some details on that? Yeah, thanks Nancy. Sure. So 65 to 70 percent of our engineers feel adequately compensated. Those that don't feel compensated would like to see between a 16 and 22 percent increase in their paychecks, bonuses, stock shares, and benefits. But when it comes to overall job satisfaction, more than 90 percent of participants are satisfied with their jobs and embrace the challenges that come with it. In fact, challenges that come with design solutions are one of the best factors that feed into job satisfaction and seeing a successful end result. That being said, most of our sample would recommend the profession to the young engineer. Many participants from the fluid power industry like to remind young engineers that there are many resources for them to get good education with hands-on experience in real-life fluid power applications. Okay, so James, we also asked our engineering audience what keeps them up at night. You know, their concerns, their worries, things like schedule outsourcing. Can you give us some insight into how they responded in that area? Yeah, of course. So, product quality and reliability issues, staying updated on new technologies and standards, and looming project deadlines were among the major concerns that kept engineers up at night. And this was consistent basically across all the surveys on it for every brand. Judging from our survey responses, these concerns can be traced back to the, to the apparent lack of people resources to work on design projects. While outsourcing was not a major concern for electronic designs readers, with only 15% actively concerned with their job security and 13% concerned with the prospect of losing their jobs to outsourcing. Respondents cited it as both a symptom and an ongoing reason for this lack of people resources. For electronic design, it was, also, it was often cited as a necessary evil, done to save money, time, and to account for a lack of in-house talent. On the other hand, many engineers also felt that it further eroded in-house skill sets. 58% of the outsourcing in the electronic design industry is relocated within the United States. 52% of the companies that outsource work do it for software engineering, and 48% for manufacturing and assembly. That's interesting, because I think, you know, in, when we do this survey, we see some of the audiences and industries come out with really similar statements and positions, and, and you know, sometimes they vary a little bit. So, Carlos, on machine design, I know there was quite a lot of responses around the outsourcing issue, but I think it was a little bit different. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. For machine design, the most common engineering work outsourced was design work at 49%, with manufacturing and assembly work coming in second at 38%. The most common areas of outsourcing are the United States, China, and India. The United States ranks in at around 62%, while China and India rank around 21 to 16%. The purposes of outsourcing for the most part are testing, due to the fact that many companies don't have an inside testing house. It also works for smaller firms that don't have the resources of larger corporations. 
most machine design engineers are not concerned with outsourcing. Ranking it at 49%, the outsourcing is not at all a concern, and ranking it at 35% is somewhat of a concern. What they are concerned about are the fewer engineering jobs that are available due to outsourcing. This came in at 37%, which leads to concerns related to outsourcing. Okay, so Chris, I was hoping that maybe you could share with us we, another concern or area of concentration that our engineering audience always talks about is education and, and just staying up to date on all the technologies, everything, new processes, et cetera, used. Thank Can you give us a window into, sure, into sure. that area? Well, almost half of those surveyed report having at least a master's degree, with 15% being holders of a doctoral degree. In addition, engineers commonly express the need to stay updated with the latest technology. However, many say they struggle to find the time needed to stay updated with all the latest information. When they do have time, engineers stay updated by using various resources. More than 70% read white papers. Engineers also utilize publications and webcasts and more than half of engineers take advantage of seminars, textbooks, and videos. So obviously there are some current trends that really rose up this year, bubbled up in terms of things that the industry is thinking about, that we're able to ask about. One of the first ones is uh, the IoT. We're hearing so much around the, I around the IoT, the Internet of Things these days. Did your audiences express interest in this area? Machine design readers yet have yet to feel the effect of IoT. Um, only 28% felt that company products would involve IoT technologies. I believe it's due to the fact that the technology is still being developed and hasn't reached a majority of the products being used by mechanical engineers. Okay, excellent. Leah, what about hydraulics and pneumatics? Um, a lot of our readers, well, it was really split between products being connected to the IoT and knowing if their products were connected to the IoT. Um, I think that hydraulics and pneumatic engineers are um, more working behind the actual functioning of their um, designs and they don't really know much about the IoT yet. So we've said that, right, so that would echo something that we probably saw in machine design, which the industrial Internet of Things slash Industry 4.0, as it's called in Germany, is, is still taking hold. The because, education needs yeah. to be developed for, okay. for, I believe, our audiences. Absolutely. That makes sense. Okay. So, James, what did they have to say about the IoT on electronic design? In electronic design, there was a greater sense that the Internet of Things was actively taking shape, as opposed to machine design, which only had 28% of its respondents say that connected products were going to be part of their future offerings. 44% for electronic design said that their companies would produce connected products. So the Internet of Things for electronic design is also being reflected in hiring trends, specifically in what engineering specialities employers are having trouble finding candidates for. While analog design has always been an area where, where employers have struggled to find candidates, especially with the rise of digital, embedded design and software design are increasingly becoming areas in which employers are finding difficulty and are increasing demand. Now Chris, obviously Microbes and RF, those are the folks who are going to be giving us the infrastructure for the IoT, so what did they have to say about it? Are they excited? Well, the Internet of Things has the potential to have a huge impact. 43% of those surveyed say their company will produce connected products. Because of this, more opportunities for engineers will be expected to occur in the future. So because of both today and tomorrow's technology, engineers expect that their skills will continue to remain in high demand. And as a matter of fact, 68% 60, of those surveyed say they believe that RF in particular will be a high demand skill set. Wonderful. Okay. So just one more question we're all going to weigh in on. Uh, Carlos, we'll start with you again. How are the engineers that, that you saw from, from your responses in our audience, um, how are they feeling about the engineering profession now and into the future? Well, Nancy, 92% of machine design readers felt that engineering was still a promising profession for them, especially for the young engineers entering the field. 69% still believe that there is significant salary advancement in the field of engineering. I think the reasons being that engineering lets itself 
be multifaceted and not only in engineering, but in also different jobs and out there in the market. Fluid power tends to be kind of behind the scenes in a lot of um, infrastructure, so I think that fluid power engineers really need to promote the profession to the young professionals. Um, and young professionals, they have a lot of um, resources to get a good fluid power education and become very knowledgeable with it and become very experienced right out of school. Um, so they really need to take that, take advantage of that. But it definitely needs to be promoted more for young engineers. Right, I think that's true. Not not just in the hydraulics and pneumatic space, but across all the engineering right. brands for the workforce that we have. Excellent. Okay, so James, what were your findings on ED? So the electronic design audience feels generally positive about how about the direction the engineering profession is going in. About 62% of our respondents said that the engineering profession was and its potential for salary advancement was as promising as it was five years ago. Compensation has kept up its upward trend since the recession in 2009 and 10, and from year to year it has seen an average growth of 1%. In addition, only 11% of respondents expect, anticipated that their companies would decrease hiring. Now Chris, you're in the high pressure microwave and RF space where of course we're always looking for more engineers, so what do they have to say about the profession? Well, overall engineers are feeling pretty positive. Even though some concerns were raised, 88% say they're satisfied with their work and 89% say they would recommend the profession to a young person. Some of this can be attributed, attributed to the challenging work that engineers do, which they generally enjoy, as well as the opportunities for creativity. So obviously we have the full reports online for all the brands with all of our findings. So please visit all of our various websites and let us know. Um, feel free to comment, tell us what you liked, make suggestions for next year. We certainly will be back with more on this audience. Thank you, Carlos, Thea, James, and Chris. This was great. And thank you for watching.